around here since we were in school. Yeah, you can say that again. Boy, things sure have changed around here since we were in school. Yeah, you can say that again. Boy, things sure have changed around here. Do you guys remember when our handbook used to be this thin? I mean, look oh, at that. We were, so, we were so spiritual. Oh, I mean, come on. I was the president of the Taylor Fellowship, too. Right, like that. <laughs> when Pastor Stephen Gilmore graduated, it was this side. Look at that thing. I think they actually had a whole appendix dedicated to his name. I remember when I used to have an appendix. <laughs> All right, things sure have changed since we were in school. Yeah. But not, but not this cup of mocha. I tell you what, this cup of mocha from the. It's so good. This is some good stuff. It is good stuff. I'm telling you what, there's nothing quite like a. A, uh, a mocha from the Cody's Cafe, isn't that right there? Peter? You can say that again. Yeah. It's good stuff. Who'd have thought that 20 years ago we'd all be sitting here drinking espresso drinks together? Yeah, do you, do you guys remember when in Fulcher Paul C we had that one, that one coffee pot? Oh. We, we would have been glad to get one decent cup of drip coffee from that coffee pot. Yeah, or even a cold cup of uh, a Folgers coffee. Without cream or sugar. Or coffee. <laughs> In a filthy cracked cup. You had a cup? <laughs> you were lucky to have a cup. Yeah, I remember. We used to have to drink out of a rule of BCF application. <laughs> yeah, well, back in my day, seeing that I am a little older, uh, we used to have to drink out of a uh, uh, soggy old club. <laughs> but you know, fellas, we were very happy when we didn't have much. When I came to this school, I didn't have nothing. No life. No wife. No time. No dime. I didn't even have 10 bucks. I didn't even have 13, or 14, or 15, or 16, or even 17. Yeah, you know, we were happy to because we didn't have anything. That's true. It's the truest word that was ever spoken. That's true. It's true. As, as Pastor Terry Swanson used to say, men, money does not buy happiness. That's true. That's true. But I'd much rather be crying in a Mercedes than on a bicycle. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was right. I was happier then, and I had nothing. Ha! You had nothing. When I was in the dorm, we didn't even have a dresser for my laundry. I kept all my spare laundry in my suitcase. Your suitcase? Yes. Well... When I was in school, we had to put our laundry in our shirt sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> and when I lived in the dorm, it was just a little old house with holes in the roof. Oh, you had a house? Oh, we had a, a room. Yeah, um, all uh, 26 of us. And uh, yeah, half the floor was missing, and yeah, there was this giant pit in the basement, and we all had to like stack up in the side there, and so as we wouldn't fall into the pit. A rum. A rum. That's all it was. A rum. You were lucky to have a room. We used to have to live in the hallway. How did you shower? <laughs> I would have given anything to live in a hallway. That would have been a paradise for us. We lived in the dumpster. And we got up every morning because the facilities guys dumped garbage on us. And that's, and that's all we had. And, and that's all it was. <laughs> well, what I, what I mean by a house was only a hole in the ground with a a piece of tarp over it. But it was the men's dorm to us. Well, I, I remember that we were evicted from our home. Yeah, during victory conference, 
We had to go and live in a, uh, a lake. Yeah, that's what it was. You would have been lucky to live in a lake. We had to live, all 126 of us, in a cardboard shoebox in the middle of the road. A cardboard box. Cardboard. You were lucky. When we, when we were in the nine-week block, we lived in a brown paper bag in a septic tank. Every morning, we had to get up at 6 a.m., clean the brown paper bag, all we had to eat was a crusty, stale piece of bread, then work in school for 14 hours, every day, week in, week out. And when we got home, the dorm super thrashes with his belt just to get us to sleep. Well, uh, you were lucky. Yeah, we had to get up every morning at 3 a.m. We had to drag the lake, then we had to grab a, uh, we had to grab our own gravel from the driveway, heat it up, and eat hot gravel for breakfast. Then after that, we had to go to school for the whole entire day. And uh, when we got back home, our dorm suit would take up a great textbook and beat us. Yeah, that's what happened. Luxury! <laughs> we had to get up at 12 in the night, get out of our shoebox, lick the driveway clean with our tongues. We had half a cup of cold gravel, and then we studied for 24 hours of the whole day at the church, and when we came home, the dorm suit would cut us in half. The bread night. Right. Well, I used to get up in the morning 10 o'clock at night, <laughs> half an hour before I went to bed, <laughs> drink a cup of sulfuric acid, <laughs> study 29 hours a day at church, and then when we would come home, our dorm soup would kill us. <laughs> Things sure are different now than they used to be. You know, I think if we told our story, how we lived in the dorm for these prospective students, they wouldn't even believe us. Things sure are different now than they used to be. They sure are. something else.